systems of equations. In this video, we're going to solve by graphing with me, Catherine. In this video, the first part, we're going to review systems of equations. We're going to look at consistent with one solution, inconsistent, no solutions, and finally dependent where we have infinite solutions. And then we're going to graph. So let's get started. A system of linear equations consists of two or more linear equations with the same variables. A solution of a system of linear equations is an ordered pair that makes both equations true at the same time. There are three possible solutions to a system of linear equations. We're going to start on the left here. The first one is we have one solution. We have one solution because the lines intersect. When we look at this picture, the solution for this system of equations is the ordered pair 3, 2. We could also have no solution. That means they're inconsistent. When we look at this graph, we notice that they're parallel. Yep, they never intersect. That's why there's no solution. And finally, we have infinite solutions. Those are dependent lines. When we look at the picture, you're going to see that the two lines are exactly the same. Let's get graphing. We're going to solve the system of linear equations by graphing. So let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to start with the first one on the left. So we have y equals negative 3x plus 4. The first thing we have to do is write each equation in slope-intercept form. Well, we're pretty lucky here because it's already in slope-intercept form. Then we need to graph the equation using the y-intercept b and the slope m. You notice that I wrote y equals mx plus b right under the equation because that makes our life easier. So looking at that, I can see that my slope is negative 3. Remember, slope needs to be a fraction, and I like to put the negative in the top. So our slope is going to be negative 3 over 1. My y-intercept is 4. That's my b. So let's graph it. Hopefully you remember the first thing we have to do is graph the y-intercept, which is 4. There we go. Next, we have to do the slope. Remember, it's rise over run. Since our slope is negative 3 over 1, we're going to go down 3 and then to the right 1. There we go. Down 3 over 1. Let's do it one more time. Down 3 and over 1. Perfect. And let's draw our line. Awesome. Let's look at the second equation, y equals negative x plus 2. Once again, we need to write each equation in slope-intercept form. Well, we're pretty lucky here because it's already in that form. Once again, I wrote y equals mx plus b right underneath it because next we have to graph each equation using the y-intercept b and the slope m. My slope is negative 1. Remember, we have to write it as a fraction, so that's why I have negative 1 over 1. That's my rise over run. My y-intercept is 2. Next step, graph. My y-intercept is 2, so I'm going to put a dot at 2 on the y-axis. Now I have to follow my slope. I'm going to go down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1. Oh my gosh, look at they already intersect. Down 1 over 1. Cool. And I'm going to draw my line. Perfect. Now the question is, does the graph intersect? Yeah, it does. And what is the solution? Well, the graph intersects at 1, 1. This is a consistent system of linear equations because they intersect. There's one thing that I want to let you know. Remember that 1, 1 is the solution. That means it makes both of these equations true. So let me show you how that works. So I have y equals negative 3x plus 4. I'm going to put in 1, 1. That's my intersection. That's my solution. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. And you're going to notice that 1, 1 is, yeah, a solution to that equation. Let's look at the other one. y equals negative x plus 2. Once again, I'm going to put 1, 1 into the equation. I have negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. And once again, it makes it true. So the ordered pair 1, 1 makes both of the equations true at the same time. Let's graph another one. Let's graph these two. Let's look at the first one, 3x plus y equals 4. 
We need to write each equation in slope-intercept form. Well, this one isn't quite there yet, so let's make it. Remember, slope-intercept form is when y is by itself. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. That gives me y equals negative 3x plus 4. Yay! That's my slope-intercept form. Now we're going to graph the equation using the y-intercept and the slope. The slope for this one is negative 3, so I'm going to put negative 3 over 1. The y-intercept is 4, so let's graph it. The first thing I have to do is graph the 4. Then from that point, I'm going to follow my slope. So I'm going to go down 3 and over 1, and down 3 and over 1. Great. Let's look at the second equation. Well, once again, this is not in slope-intercept form, so we need to make it in slope-intercept form. That means get y by itself. So the first thing I have to do is subtract 6x from both sides of the equation. Next, to get y by itself, I have to divide everything by 2. This leaves y equals negative 3x plus 1, which is slope-intercept form. The next step, graph each equation. My slope for this one is also negative 3, but my y-intercept is 1. First thing we have to do is graph the y-intercept. That's the 1. Now we're going to follow the slope. We're going to go down 3 and over 1, down 3 and over 1. And let's graph it. Does the graph intersect? No, it doesn't. These graphs are parallel. What is the solution? This is an inconsistent system of linear equations, so there's no solution. How could I know these are parallel lines without graphing? Well, if you notice, these two lines have the exact same slope. That means they're parallel. The difference between the two lines is their y-intercept. The first one has a 4, and the second one has a 1. That makes them parallel. Let's graph another system of equations. Once again, we need to write each equation in slope-intercept form. So we see that the first one isn't quite there yet. We need to get y by itself. So we're going to add x to both sides, which gives us 3y equals x plus 9. We need to get y by itself. That means I have to divide everything by 3. That turns out to be y equals 1 third x plus 3. And that's exactly what we want, because it looks like slope-intercept form. Next, we need to figure out the y-intercept and the slope. Well, the slope is 1 third, which is rise over run, and the y-intercept is 3. So let's graph it. The first thing we always do is graph the y-intercept, which is 3. Cool. Now we have the slope, which is 1 third. That means we're going to go up 1 and over 3. Up 1 and over 3. And draw our line. Perfect. Let's look at the second equation. Once again, we have to put it in slope-intercept form. I'm going to add 2x to both sides, which gives me 6y equals 2x plus 18. Now I have to divide everything by 6 because I want to get y by itself. That turns out to be y equals 1 third x plus 3, which is cool because it tells me that my slope is 1 third, and oh my goodness, my y-intercept is 3. Do you notice something interesting? Yeah, when I graph it, I get the same line. So, does this graph intersect? Yeah. And what is the solution? Yes, these graphs intersect because they're the same line. This is a dependent system of linear equations. The solution is all real numbers. Now it's your turn. Here's the first one for the self quiz. You're going to pause the video, graph to determine the correct answer, then press play to check. All right, let's see how you did. We're going to solve the system of equations by graphing. If the system is inconsistent or the equations are dependent, say so. The first thing we have to do is put them in slope-intercept form. So we have 3x plus y equals 11. Putting it in slope-intercept form, you get y equals negative 3x plus 11. Now we have to graph. My slope is negative 3. Remember, we have to write that as a fraction. So I have negative 3 over 1. My y-intercept is 11. Well, when we look at my graph, 11 is just above the 10 there, so I'm kind of guessing where it goes. Now we have to do the slope. Down 3 and over 1. Down 3 and over 1. And here's my line. Let's look at the second equation. Once again, you need to put it in y-intercept form. 
whoa, do you notice something? Yeah, they're the same line. So if we look at our possible answers, it's not A because it doesn't intersect at one point. It's not inconsistent because they're not parallel. And they don't intersect at 0, 11. So that means these are dependent equations. What exactly does C say? It says the ordered pair x, y, given that 3x plus y equals 11, is a dependent solution. That means they're the same line. And there are infinite number of solutions. Let's do the second self quiz. You're going to pause the video, graph to determine the correct answer, then press play to check. Let's see how you did. Once again, we need to put these in y-intercept form. 3x minus 2y equals 4. What I did was subtract 3x from both sides, and then I divided by negative 2. That gives me y equals 3 halves x minus 2. Writing y equals mx plus b underneath it is super helpful. That shows me that my slope is 3 halves and my y-intercept b is negative 2. So let's graph it. Here's my negative 2 and then I'm going to go up 3 and over 2. Up 3 and over 2. Cool. Let's look at the next equation. Once again, I want to get y by itself. So I added 6x to both sides. Next, I need to divide everything by 4 to get y by itself. So what do I have? Well, m equals 3 halves and b equals 7 fourths. Do you notice something interesting before I even graph it? Yeah, the slopes are exactly the same and the y-intercepts are different. Do you remember what that means? Yep, they're inconsistent. There's no solution because these two lines are parallel. That means there's no solution. But let's say you get this far and you don't quite see it. Let's continue graphing so I can show you that they're actually parallel. The first thing I have to do is graph the y-intercept. 7 fourths is really hard to graph, so I changed it to a decimal. So we have 1.75. So I'm going to put my first dot at 1.75. It's kind of close to 2. Anytime you have a decimal in the y-intercept, just graph as best you can. Next, I'm going to go up 3 over 2 because that's my slope up 3 over 2, and when I graph it, you can definitely see that these are parallel. Let's look at the next self quiz. Try this one. You're going to pause the video, graph to determine the correct answer, then press play to check. All right, let's see how you did. So for the first one, we have to solve for y. So basically all I did was subtracted x from both sides. You'll notice that my slope is negative 1. I wrote negative 1 over 1 because we need rise over run. And my y-intercept is 2. So the first thing we have to do is graph the y-intercept and then go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. There we go. In my second equation, I have to add x to both sides. That gives me y equals x plus 2. Super easy to see that my slope is 1, so I have to write it as a fraction, rise over run, or 1 over 1, and my slope is 2. So we're going to put a dot at 2 for my y-intercept. Oh, I think we already have our answer, right? But let's keep graphing. We're going to go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, and draw our line. Yep. So let's look at our possible answers. A, the system has a single solution. B, there are infinitely many solutions. That means the equations are dependent. Or C, the system is inconsistent. Well, from our picture, we can definitely see the answer is A. The system has a single solution. And they intersect at 0, 2. Yay! Now it's your turn to practice. The only way you're going to get good at this is practicing. If you like the video, pin me to Pinterest. And make sure to subscribe. You don't want to miss another fun-filled episode with me.